This video has been sponsored by DistroKid. The main way that you're going to be able to increase the perceived loudness of your mix is by reducing its overall dynamic range. This means that the difference in level between the loudest and quietest elements in your song needs to be smaller. By doing this, you provide yourself with more headroom, which means that when you drive your mix into a limiter when you master your song, it's not going to distort prematurely. Effectively reducing dynamic range is done in stages. If you try to apply a huge amount of compression while mastering, you're going to end up distorting your track before reaching the level of loudness that you're trying to achieve. Loudness is prepared for during the mixing process and executed during the mastering process. Many streaming services normalize songs based on loudness level or LUFS level, which essentially removes the need to achieve loudness. But in another one of my videos, I explain why it makes sense to reach for an LUFS value of at least negative 13 integrated LUFS. So if you're having trouble achieving that, or you want to make your song louder because your favorite artists make their songs loud, here's how you do it. When you read mixing textbooks, they tell you that dynamics are great and that some elements in your song should be quiet while others should be loud. With genres like EDM, this holds true, but to a much finer degree than you might think. You want main elements such as your lead synths to be louder than less prominent elements, but only slightly. The challenge here is getting the elements of your song to do this while remaining incredibly close in level. It's easy to tell if one sound is 9 decibels louder than another sound, but it's much more difficult to tell if a sound is 0.5 decibels louder than another sound. A big reason most beginners aren't able to get their mixes as loud as the professionals is because they can't hear differences in perceived loudness the way that professionals can. This skill is developed over time with practice, and the result is that you're able to create a tight mix that becomes loud without distorting when you drive it through a limiter. Now that the wheels in your head are spinning, you're probably thinking you can just set all your levels using a peak meter. I don't recommend that for a few reasons, but mainly because of something called Fletcher Munson curves. The way we perceive sound is non-linear across the frequency spectrum and at different decibel levels. There's actually a range right between 2000 to 5000 hertz that humans perceive as louder than other frequency ranges. Listening to a sine wave resonate around 40 hertz at negative 9 decibels will sound like it's much quieter than a sine wave playing around 3000 hertz at negative 9 decibels. There's a trick to work around this if you aren't comfortable dialing in your track levels yet by ear. You can use pink noise as an auditory reference, meaning you don't need to rely on a meter. I've included a link to an article on how to quickly set track levels using pink noise below. So what does a compressor do? Well, it reduces the dynamic range of audio signals. This seems like it's the solution to all your problems, but compressing elements in your song when you don't need to can suck the life out of your mix and cause more issues than it fixes. You're trying to achieve loud without ruining your mix, and there is a way to balance the two. You're mostly going to apply compression to a track when you're working with raw audio, such as vocals that you recorded at home, or maybe acoustic guitar. Samples you download from Splice are usually compressed already, meaning you don't need to compress them yourself. It is possible to overcompress a sound and suck the power out of it. Even if you understand what a compressor is, what it does, and what the controls do, you might not necessarily know when you need to apply compression. This is where a lot of people get really confused, so I recommend you check out my video called How to Compress Vocals Like a Pro. It walks through every step of the compression process, step by step, and clearly outlines when it makes sense to compress your audio. Once you've set all your individual track levels and compressed track elements individually, you might want to tighten up the dynamic range of your groups using glue compression. The goal is to compress similar elements together in order to make them feel a part of the same space and gently enhance loudness. The glue compressor that I typically use is the Waves SSL G Master Bus Compressor. When using this compressor, you want to use a long attack time around 30 milliseconds to allow transients through, a short release time around 0.1 seconds to avoid the pumping sound of compression, and roughly 2 decibels of gain reduction. You can also experiment with a ratio of 2 to 1 or 4 to 1 for more aggressive songs. In the beginner mastering tutorial I released last week, I walked through the process of applying glue compression, so you can take a look at that if you want to see how it's done and hear what the results sound like. Now a quick word from the sponsor of this video, which is DistroKid. DistroKid is the music distributor that I use to upload my music to streaming services like Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, TikTok, and YouTube. One of the big reasons I use DistroKid is because it provides you with a hyper follow web page that you can use to get more followers on Spotify. Anyone who clicks the button on your hyper follow page will follow you on Spotify automatically, so it's a great way to build up your fan base. On top of that, whoever clicks on the button will also automatically save your entire album to their Spotify library, which can boost the number of plays you get. You get each fan's email address, they're notified when your release goes live, and you get insights into which cities most of your fans live in, which can help you plan tours.
yours. Best of all, DistroKid is affordable. It only costs $19.99 a year, and you can upload as many songs as you want. If you sign up using the affiliate link down below, you'll save 7% on your first year's DistroKid membership. Limiters aren't something reserved specifically for mastering. They can also help you control the dynamics of your groups. If there are rogue transients slipping through your glue compressor, you can use a limiter to keep them in check. You don't want this limiter applying constant limiting. You just want the limiter to activate and reduce any infrequent transients that occur as a result of elements in your group summing together. The plugin I recommend for this is the BX Limiter by Plugin Alliance. It's made specifically for limiting individual tracks as well as groups. I like it because it allows you to apply limiting without makeup gain. When you drop the threshold level, you'll hear the peaks get limited, but there won't be an increase in loudness, meaning you won't need to readjust the level of your groups. I've got one more trick up my sleeve before moving on to mastering. Parallel compression is when you create a duplicate of a sound, apply heavy compression to the duplicate, and mix it back into the dry, unaffected sound. This fills in the troughs in your audio waveform, making quieter elements appear louder. iHeartNY is a parallel compression plugin made by Baby Audio that you can apply directly to your groups without setting up an aux track and dealing with confusing signal routings. It's really easy to use. You throw it on a group, adjust the parallel signal level, dial in how much spank you want, and then tweak the output level. You don't need to worry about attack, release, threshold, and ratio settings like you would when using another compressor. You're going to notice an increase in loudness, and the results are generally going to sound a little thicker and fatter, and you might notice that your top end is a bit more present too, but the peak level of your groups shouldn't be much higher. At this point, if your track doesn't sound tight and together, go back to your mix and sort those issues out. Keep in mind that mastering isn't magic. As a general rule of thumb, don't move on to mastering your track until you're completely satisfied with your mix. Being satisfied with your mix means you would feel good about releasing it with just a limiter on the master bus. To squeak out a little bit more loudness and polish up your mix, you can try applying glue compression and a little bit of saturation. That will help warm up your mix and gently reduce the dynamic range. Finally, you're able to apply a limiter to your mix and hear the results of all the hard work you put in when you drive the input gain. Since your mix is already packed into a tight dynamic range as a result of the mixing decisions you made beforehand, you don't need to slam your mix too hard to achieve the loudness you're looking for. This means you're not going to end up with terrible distortion. If your limiter isn't behaving the way you want, there is a chance that you're using your limiter improperly or you're using a limiter that just distorts quickly. My recommendation is to use FabFilters Pro L2 and check out my tutorial on how to dial in the Pro L2 settings effectively. Using the right settings can help you increase loudness further as well. The Oxford Inflator is my secret loudness maximization plugin. It doesn't apply compression, but it still increases perceived loudness. You can actually apply it after your final limiter because it lets you increase perceived loudness without increasing gain. The user manual is a bit vague in regards to how it works, but it says that the inflator process functions by changing the relative probability of samples in the program material such that there is a greater probability of larger values than the original signal. Basically, it makes your mix louder without increasing the peak level and without the pumping effects a compressor would apply. Slap it on your master bus after your limiter, make sure the effect control is turned up to 100% to avoid increasing the peak level, and then tweak the curve control to taste. That's all there is to it, it's a pretty simple plugin, but it's gonna make your masters louder. Just make sure to perform an A-B test to make sure it's not making your mix too bright, which can sometimes happen if you get carried away. Hit that thumbs up if this video helped you out, and if you wanna learn how to produce better music fast, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so that you don't miss out on tips, tutorials, and gear roundups. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Dr.